Hello, my name is Dave Walker and I am a coach and storyteller and today I'm wearing my storyteller hat and no it's not my newly published book, it is my blogs. So I have written and spoken uh, on a lot of topics. Uh, I am a life coach and uh, also a life storyteller so I tell stories in all the different parts of life. So whether it's covering off leadership, uh, careers, family, friends, relationships, relationships as friends, relationships in the workplace, uh, relationships with our better halves, or, or as I call them, their soulmates. I think I've got something out there for anyone. So that's my hypothesis. So my hypothesis is that I have a blog topic or more, at least one or more, that would be of interest to you. So to test that out, what I've actually done to test out that hypothesis is I've put together a one-pager. So this one pager is on my LinkedIn site. It's attached there it's a, and basically it's got 14 of them on there um, to give you a bit of sense of the different topics that are covered off. So what I'm going to do to make it even easier than having you go through the one pager is I'm going to go through the one pager and I'm going to read these to you. And I might throw in a little bit of co color commentary as well. So there's 14 of them. I'm going to go with the blog name and, you know, what about this blog is going to help you, um, you know, make other changes or become more engaging with folks or whatever it is that you're looking to do. Um, it's going to make it easier on you. So are you ready? Um, you know, pour yourself a glass of wine, a glass of water, kick back, relax. Here we go. All right. Number one. So Dave's top five list, my dream job. And that one is helping you come up with or refine criteria to help you in choosing the right career opportunities for you. So we're talking about coming up with career opportunity, the criteria. They say that people change their jobs and they change their careers, not just jobs and roles, but careers five times on average. I think I've changed mine about 12 now. Uh, so the criteria might come in handy for you uh, moving forward. And often we often change roles every year as well. So the criteria might want to uh, dust it off and take a look at it more than once. I also, for some of you who have seen some of my other blogs, I have lost 100 pounds of weight and kept it off for, for a good part of a couple of years. So my blog, Dave's Top 5 List, How I Lost Close to 100 Pounds of Body Fat, uh, Make and Maintain Some Changes on the Living Healthier and Longer Front. Uh, not only am I feeling better these days, which is good because I'm probably going to live a lot longer now, um, which is going to cost me more money, but anyhow, <laughs> I, I think it's well worth it. The return on the investment, uh, I, I do have an accounting designation, is definitely there. Um, and then in the leadership, I talked about the leadership. We have a lack of leaders these days. I don't know if you're aware of it. Just Google it. Uh, lots of organizations are investing lots of time and money in coming up with other leaders. So I've got a few of those. So the first one is Dave's top five list traits of a great leader as viewed through my lens. Uh, it's going to help you engage others using key traits of a leader as viewed through your lens. So at the end of the day, I'm a big fan of authenticity. So it's kind of what makes you an engaging leader is, you know, what you probably want to go with to engage folks. Uh, you can be inspired by others, but you're going to want to go with what feels right to you would, would be my would be my my, my suggestion. Uh, and then I got into coming up with a top five list again. You can see I like top five list, top five list traits of my soulmate. Well, that one was a little bit slippery or slope. Uh, I ended up cheating. I came up with 10. Um, so if you're looking at solidifying your bond with your romantic uh, partner and want to look at some of those traits and maybe compare your lists together, see how aligned you are, there's that one to look from. Uh, another word, the nasty S word, stress. So stress, stress, go away. You know, manage that nasty word. Uh, we're seeing a lot more of that these days. It's kind of crazy out there at work, rest and play with all everything that's going on and the, the technology and that. So we're seeing a lot more stress, a lot more people, um, a lot more burnouts at work and the whole bit. So another area to go explore. Uh, next up, our next generation of leaders. So yeah, we talked about having a lack of uh, leadership. Well, here's an opportunity to create some more of them while becoming a better one at the same time. So that's my blog, Our Next Generation of Leaders. Next up, let's talk about my bout with clinical depression. Become more aware of depression and the nasty effects that it can have on ourselves and those around us. I've read anywhere that, you know, one 
you know, one out of five or one out of four people are going to go through clinical depression at one point in time in their lives. I've gone through it. Uh, and you can just imagine you're going to connect, you know, all the people around you are also going to be exposed to that too. So here's an opportunity to go in there. And if it's not yourself, it could be somebody else um, to help help deal with something that is a pretty tough uh, part of many people's lives these days. Next, are you playing to your strengths? You've heard the, the uh, concept playing to your strengths. So my top 10 learnings from playing to them with a bunch of 10 year olds. So I actually had a playing to your strengths session with my daughter when she was 10 in her class. And the approaches that we used, uh, guess what? Uh, my hypothesis again is that they will work for, for people above the age of 10. So if you're looking at getting a better sense of your strengths and how you can play with them, how you can identify and connect with other people who have other strengths to complement yourselves, uh, that might be one you might want to take a look at as well. Next we have, and this is a long one, hold on here, take a, take a big sip of your wine or water. Who are you? The unique you. The authentic you. How well do you know you? Sharing my top 10 ways that I got to know myself better. Better understand what makes you the unique you and better still how to play to your unique you. So it's not just playing to your strengths. There's a whole lot of other facets in there that you can play to as well. Your leadership style. We talked about leadership, your communication style, your preferences, uh, you, know, what, you know, what makes you tick, what are your passions, all of those things that you can be playing to as well. Next, eating healthy does not have to taste like, uh, it's the S word, S-H-I... So eating healthy does not have to taste like S-H-I-T. Uh, eat nutritiously and feel better without having to hold your nose while doing it. So as I mentioned, I lost 100 pounds of fat. It certainly made it a lot easier uh, when the things that I was eating actually tasted good. Uh, so it can be healthy and taste good. All right, we're almost there. We've gone through 10, four more, hang in there. How to lead a miserable life or not. So. Choose from, this is an excellent book, by the way. Um, choose from 40 strategies to lead a more miserable life or not by doing the polar opposite of those strategies. So the author has done a fabulous job of coming up with 40 strategies to make yourself miserable. Um, and you go in there, pick one that resonates with you. Uh, here would be my suggestion and the author as well. So spoiler alert, uh, suggests that you might want to do the opposite. Next, we're back to leadership again. As I said, it's a, it's a hot topic these days. We are on the lookout for, for, for a lot more. Yo leaders, are you a multiplier or a diminisher? And by the way, uh, we can be ourselves multipliers and diminishers. Ever get out of bed one day and instead of multiplying folks and their engagement and bringing out the, you know, the leadership in them as well, we diminish them? Um, again, so again, being aware of ourselves as well. Um, so identify the extent that you are having a positive versus a negative impact on the level of engagement and the people you are looking to for your leadership. Great book, by the way. Um, I'm still going through it, but I'm pu pulling lots of really helpful things that are allowing me to be a better leader and also um, help make other better leaders as well. Multipliers, How the Best Leaders Make Everyone Smarter. It's by Liz Wiseman. Not as good as my book, but, uh, but not bad. Next, so two more. This one's actually more appropriate for February 14th, and we're only September. What is your love language? And oh, happy Valentine's Day. Nurture your love languages. There's five of them, by the way. You want to pick the ones that uh, you could do in order of importance. Nurture your love language, and those are the ones that you love. So why wait till Valentine's Day? Uh, why not start connecting and sharing some love uh, today, uh, September 12th, in this case? And last but not least, uh, I mentioned I am an accountant. I have an accounting designation. <laughs> I haven't been using my accounting skills as much. Well, that's not true. I'm a management accountant. I started my own business a couple of years ago, and this is the, that is certainly helping me out. So have you updated your balance sheet lately? Catalog of all the skills and experiences and connections that you have going for you. Uh, be, be forewarned and uh, especially you accountants that it is my, the balance sheet that I have put together and I am recommending is not in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. I think some of the biggest assets we don't measure on a balance sheet. We don't have those people, those leaders that we're trying to create. We're not capturing all that information. We're not capturing that engagement on the balance sheet. And unfortunately, it's having a terrible impact on the income statement. 
Um, so since you are your own asset, um, I encourage you to go in there, take a look at that balance sheet. Yeah, if you like some of the categories and criteria in there, you know, everything that I share is yours there to beg, borrow and steal, go ahead. You're not stealing anything because I'm, I'm encouraging you to do that. So again, that's um, my blogs. They're on my, you, all of these are archived on my site at uh, Dave, Dave W coaching and storytelling.com and you can sign up to get them hot off the uh, virtual uh, press when they come out and also for those of you who have gone and got my book uh, Mondays don't have to suck uh, in the back there is a resource section and on page 278 you will you will see that listing in there there's some other goodies in there for you too so there you go uh, a little over 10 minutes I hope you enjoyed your glass of wine again I would love to know um, how my hypothesis worked out um, let me know if there are one or more of those that resonated with you and feel free to share them with others thanks a lot have a great day or night or whenever this is cheers